most people may not understand. What does it mean to trust God? What does it mean to trust God? What does it mean to trust God? It is to completely believe on what he has capacity to do. Listen. To do and to be sure he will do it for you. Now, I come again. Trust in God is to believe, it is to completely believe in what he has capacity to do and that he will surely do it for you. Now, if somebody say, what does it mean to trust God? Do you know that there are so many children of God today serving a God they don't know? Some children of God don't know what God, our Father, has capacity to do. Now, how can you trust a person who you don't know his level of strength? Hello? How can you trust a person who you don't know what he can do? You know, there are times that uh, you see things happen, you say, I, I know, uh, you know, like in, uh, 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 we have two cars in our house. In those days, I used to say, anytime I want to travel, I know the one. We have one car that time, one uh, a Mazda, Millennium. Anytime I want to travel, I say, this is the most reliable car when it comes to traveling. Now, I had a Jeep with it, too. But that master, it has never disappointed me once on the road. So anytime I'm going on a long journey and I say, I'm going with the master, I'm rest assured my journey is safe. The only thing that can make it stop on the way is if the fuel eventually finish. But apart from that, I know that this master, it doesn't stop. It won't cough. Nothing will happen to it. Even if you are going for six hours, it's still going. So most children of God, the reason why they don't understand trust is because most children of God don't understand what their God can do. They don't understand what their God can do. So to trust God, number one, is to understand, like I said, it is to completely believe, uh, uh, where am I? It's to completely believe in what he has capacity to do. You, you know what your God can do. And two, you believe that he will show up, that my God, he will show up. Now, you know, that was exactly what happened to Shadrach, Meshach, and Abednego. As they were casting them to the fire, they got to a point they turned. They said, oh, king, even if our God does not deliver us right now, even if our God does not deliver us from your fire, one thing is sure. One thing is sure is that we won't compromise. We won't bow down to this image. You know why? They had the understanding that even if they die in the fire, they will be with God somewhere above. Am I communicating? Do you understand the God you are serving? So many Christians. How will you as a Christian begin to decide to go visit a herbalist because there is a problem? It's because you don't know the capacity of your God. How can you a Christian now begin to do dubious things? You say, ah, ah, that problem that is coming. We, well, I have no choice. I just have to lie about my age. I just have to lie about my result. I just have to manipulate documents. So that that contract can be given to me is because you don't know the God you serve. If you trust the God you serve, you know the God you serve, and you know that this God will not disappoint you, listen, you will be like Esther. Esther knew that she was not an indigent. She was a slave. She knew that slaves cannot marry the king. She knew of, of a surety, but she believed that God will show up, and she didn't disclose her identity. Everybody went for the contest. She also went. When it was time for her to go to see the king, she went to see the king. And eventually she became queen. God is looking for, in this end time, believers that will be ready to trust him even with their life. Somebody say, I hear. So I'm asking again, what does it mean to trust God? It is to completely believe in what he has capacity to, to do and be, you are sure that he will show up. I also say, we can also say, you are so sure of what he will do next or is doing presently. You are so sure. Now, that's what it means to trust God, of what God will do next. You are so sure. What will God do next? I know God will glorify himself in my life. You are, you are so sure of what he's doing. He's do, even when nothing is showing that you know anything, but you are so sure that you, God is in control. Even Tim Barry, any sign, I'm just so sure that God is in control. Hallelujah. This makes you calm. Even a mixed challenging situation. Have, have you not, I, I think it was, a, it was in a conference I attended. It was um, Reverend uh, Colenda, the man that succeeded 
Bunky. You know, his, he was sharing his father's testimony. He said his father was an evangelist. He went for crusade. And by the time his father came back, he, Kolenda, was already dead. But the people didn't want to bury him because his father was not around. So he, he died in the night. They left him on the bed. They let, his father will be back today. The, he said his father said when he came back, he saw him on the bed, dead boy on the bed. He said, but the father said, wait, wait, wait. When God gave me this child, he told me that this boy was going to become a great evangelist. If God had said he would be an evangelist, he, he wouldn't die before that time. So the father decided, I won't bury my son. I won't bury my son. Because why? Because there's a promise of God over his life. That's trust. Reverend Colenda said, his father now decided, lock up the door. People were telling him, you come and bury this boy. He said, no. He started praying. It was nine hours later that Colenda sneezed. Now today, Colenda is a worldwide evangelist. People that trust God know what God wants to do. Even when they are confused where they are, they know that God will definitely show up. That's why I want you to move to that realm of trust. I will teach you how. But understand that that is the only thing that can make you calm in the presence of the, of, of the situation of now. That's the only thing that will make you calm. It is the realm of trust. Let's go for that. Question number two we are going to ask, answer. How do we build trust in God? How do we build trust in God? Because trusting God is not a gift. No, no. It's not a gift that you pray and say, Lord, give me the gift of trusting you. It's not a gift. It's a virtue that you can develop. A habit you can, you will grow. So let's look at the question again. How do we build trust in God? I put that in A, B, and C. A, from our understanding of what the Bible says about him. From our understanding of what the Bible says about him. That means you cannot understand God or trust God if you are not a Bible student. You know, we have churches all over now. Churches where it is only the man of God, servant of God that the people know. They don't know God. It is only the pastor that the people quote. They don't know the Bible. So every service, we are waiting for the pastor to come and prophesy. No, 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 no. That's not the kind of assignment God gave me. God gave me an assignment to produce believers. Believers that can stand in the presence of challenges without having to call their pastor. Say I hear now. How do you build trust? You cannot build trust if you don't understand scriptures. Have you read the scripture to the point on your own now? I'm not saying what your pastor said to you. On your own, to the point that you understand what God can do. When I gave my life to Christ in the 90s, when I became born again, the first thing I did was to commit myself to personal Bible study. That's why, I see, whatever people say now doesn't move me. When people say, eh, this doctrine is the right way, ah, that doctrine is wrong, it doesn't move me. Because, you know what, I have personal understanding of scriptures. See, I hear now. That's why when I speak at times, I speak confidently. I mean, uh, confidently. I know what God can do. I know what God will not do. You know what God cannot do? God cannot lie. It's in scriptures. He can never lie. Why will he lie? Who is he afraid of? Who, who does he want to cover up for? From? He cannot lie. The Bible says it is impossible for God to lie. Anything he will not do, he will not say. And when he says it, he will do it. So what is the first way from our understanding of what the Bible says about him? Now look at what Daniel himself said in Daniel chapter 9 verse 2. He said, I, I discover from books. That's why every child of God must be committed to personal Bible study. Be committed. So that on your own basis, show me Daniel 9 2. On your own, on your own, you understand what your God has capacity to do. Some Christians don't know. They only know what their pastor have told them. As a young Christian, sir, I grew to the point that even in Bible study, when they ask questions and I, and I make contribution, my pastor will look at me. I've not taught you all this, brother, Prince Ray. Because I was growing on my own. Look at this. In the first year of his reign, I, Daniel, understood by what? 
understood by books the number of years whereof the word of the Lord came to Jeremiah, which means that Daniel was reading the book of Jeremiah. Lord, why are we in bondage? Lord, why are we in bondage? Why is it that Babylon has conquered Israel? Lord, why are we in bondage? And he was praying, Father, deliver Israel. And he, he said, I discovered by books that we cannot be delivered until 70 years. Look at it now. Look at it now. The number of years whereof the word of the Lord came to Jeremiah, the prophet, that he would accomplish how many? 70 years in the desolation of Jerusalem. So when Daniel saw this, there is no time, there is no need wasting our prayer. God has said, Israel will be in desolation for 70 years. I shouldn't waste my fasting again, no. Some of you don't know what God can do. That's why sinners will talk to you and you are confused. There was a time I went to the market, Okiado Market, and I met one of my schoolmates, and he stopped me. He said, they say you are a pastor, and I said, yes. He said, now let us argue. Let's argue. Bring your Bible. I will bring my Quran. Let us argue about God. I look at him and I smile. He said, why are you laughing? I say, I'm too small. He said, what? He said, I'm too small. I said, I, told, I said, I'm too small to introduce God to you. That God cannot be explained by books. You can't explain him by books. It's not mathematics where you say one plus one is two. But when you talk about God, one plus one can be 101. How did he get 101? You say, no, I, I don't understand. It's, everything about God is a mystery. He said, how did Jesus become the son of God? I say, mystery, you can't understand. He looked at me, shook his head, and I left. You know why I was able to, uh, to, to, to answer him? I was able because even me, myself, I have studied. Study scripture, know what your God can do. God will not go and put you answer to your prayer eh, with Nainjabet. If God put answer to your prayer in Nainjabet, he himself will go against his principle of work. Oh, you are, you are angry now. You are angry, Abby. It's the truth. Because some Christians are saying, ah, let's be praying. You know what Jesus said? I'll be preaching about that in the second service. He said, up to now, my father is at work. Because he's working, I must work. Study your Bible. There is no how you can build trust. How will you trust a person you don't know? Hmm, ask me. How will you trust a person you don't know? I can bet it anywhere. See me. I can bet it anywhere. If somebody called me now, hello, Pastor Prince, where are you now? Your wife is fighting. Oh. Your wife is fighting. Oh. In fact, they, they, they tore their clothes. I will say, it's like a... One, that's one thing my wife can never do. I've known her 21 years. She will, she will either keep quiet. You talk to her tomorrow, she will not say one word. Even before I met her, she didn't fight. Is it now that she wants to fight? I, will, I can say it anywhere because I've studied her. But if somebody come in and say, hello, Pastor, I don't know. This is your wife. She's just looking at me whether I'm going to the pit. I don't know. I don't know whether it's in the pit or I'm going to the way. I'll say, that's my wife. That's my wife. Once she has instructed you and you don't listen, she will keep quiet. She will tell you, if you fall in the pit, then I can help you when you call for help. Because I've told you that's not the way. The same thing, you can understand God. There are some miracles I see on television. I always tell you, this is not God. Hello? I always ask, this one is not God. This one is arranged. How can somebody come up, put plate, cover it, and say, Jesus, and open it? There will be a bowl of rice. It is not God. In the miracle of multiplication, he asked for what they had. What did you have? Hello? Am I communicating? Are you sure you are here? Now let's go further. So how do you build trust in God? Let's answer it again from our understanding of what the Bible says about him. This is why you see what some believers, sorry, you see some believers are troubled in time of challenges and some are relaxed. 
You know, you'll be wondering, you see some Christians in their time of challenge, they are relaxed. Uh, we had issue now uh, in our marriage. First three years of our marriage, we didn't have a child. And nobody knew, except those that are close to us, that know that there is no baby in our house. We we'll still come to church and dance. We come to church and rejoice because of the understanding of scriptures we have. I watched some of you. One year after your marriage, you have started visiting one prophet's house to another prophet's house. Three years, we didn't have a child. And we're still coming to the altar preaching, God is good all the time. He put a songs of praise in the heart of my God is good ah, all the time. Ah, through the darkest night, his light will shine. God is good. Yeah, God is good. All the, and we still go home rejoicing. We still pray for people. Receive your miracle babies. They will receive and come and share testimonies we didn't have. We have understanding of scriptures. Ah, my wife, you always see us in church. Always happy. Why? Because of the understanding we have. And our understanding makes us to trust God. You see some people in the presence of challenges because they are broke. There is no money. The next thing, ah, I don't think, I don't think I will be coming to church. I don't think I will be serious. I will be committed to my... This is me and my wife. Was it not yesterday we were talking at home and with the children? There are times in our... Many years ago, food care. Food is the smallest problem we have. It's not that we had food though, eh? You know why I say the smallest problem we had those days? We don't use to eat. We don't even have time to eat. So when there was no food, it didn't bother us. You still see us in the morning. She'll be doing her morning devotion. I'll be doing my morning devotion. Because of the understanding we have from scriptures. That is, a man's life does not consist on the natural things, the abundance that he has. Please study your Bible. So that you can know God on your own. Number two, how do we develop trust in God? B, sorry, I, I use alphabet. B, B, how do we develop trust in God? From the revelational timely words, write them down like that. From the revelational timely words, you have access to from the throne of grace. From the revelational timely word, you have access to from the throne of grace. Now, when I say revelational timely word, I'm talking about the things God show you on your own. For instance, you got a dream, a, a message is placed in a dream for you. For instance, you hear his voice speak to you. For instance, you know, one, in one way or the other, God speaks to you. Now, I wrote down this scripture. When they put on the journey, you, you see, see. Acts 22, 21 to 25. Acts 22, 21 to 25. Acts 22, 21 to 25. Something happened in Acts 22, 21 to 25. The video is not showing. Any problem? Something happened in Acts 22 from verse 21. Do you know, look up. Paul and other men were traveling in the, on the ship. And as they were going on the ship, hear me. There was a, a, a terrible storm. But God revealed to Paul in a dream in the night. He said, I saw an angel. And the angel said to me, not one person will lose his life in this journey. Not one person. That's a revelation of timely word. Not one person will lose his life on this journey. Not one person. In your combined on this particular journey. Yeah, look at it. Okay, let's read it. Let's read it. And he said unto me, depart. For I will send the pharaohs unto the Gentiles. To 25. And they gave him audience unto this word. And then lifted their voices and said, Away with such fellow from the earth. And it is not fit for, let's move on, 23. And as they cried out and cast off their clothes. And they took those. Maybe I missed the scripture. Is this Look for it for me. Those of you in the uh, media, I will explain on. Maybe 26 or so. Now, do you now know that when Paul now told everybody, he says, see, everybody don't be afraid. God told me that not one single soul will die on this ship. We will lose the ship, but not one person will die. 
Look at that confidence. When the storm now came against the sheep, they lost the sheep. But beloved, not one person died. How do we develop confidence? Trust in God. You develop it when you are able to hear God on your own. You know, I was telling you, in those days when we had challenges of the fruit of the womb, I went back to God. Father, what is happening to my marriage? There's no baby in this house. Lord, you, and this, you told me to marry this woman. This is the one you have given me. Lord, why is there no ch ch children in the house? You know what God told me? He gave me the name of three children. He said, write this down. And I wrote the first one. I wrote the second one. I wrote the third one. Ah, imagine me praying that, Lord, why is there no child in this house? He gave me names of three children. And I wrote the three down. So when people were mocking, I wasn't mocking. I was trusting because God cannot lie. I read in scriptures that he cannot lie. And he spoke to me three names. You can't build confidence if you can't hear God. All these people you see, you read in scripture. Eh, Shadrach, Meshach, and Abednego, they stood eh, and they were going to the fire. They had something. See, I hear. This one that uh, 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 Daniel, uh, he was not afraid. They were casting him to the lion's den. He was not afraid. They had something. If you don't hear anything, you know, go take courage yourself. You'll be afraid. And I have told you here several times God is a speaking God. He's our Father. He loves to speak to us, He's not a dumb God. He's a speaking God. He loves to speak to you. But most times, it is we that don't pay attention to what he has to tell us. How do you develop trust from the revelational timely words you have access to from the throne of grace? Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Say I hear. Hallelujah. Listen, this is why it is important you build relationship with God. Now, let me tell you another one. In Genesis 15, 1 to 6, you know, Father Abraham too didn't have a child. But this particular Genesis 15, as he was saying, Lord, with all these promises you have given me, who will inherit my property? Who will inherit my house? The Bible says, and the word of the Lord came. Your wife, Sarah, will bring forth a son. Can you see? The promise of God came. Your wife, Sarah, will bring forth a son. You will have a son from Sarah. The Bible says instantly. And Abraham believed God. And what? It was credited to him as righteousness. You know what is happening to today's Christianity? The people don't want to develop, uh, create time to grow in God. Everybody is looking for Indomie miracles. He passed on me. He Ah, Mokbolu radio, Emma by my by my boy, Baba is a calle lati, I wear 150 days. Would a girl rook on day? Ah, the body more ruined by Bobboyin Ash, Oguayan Ash, Bobboyo Lisha. One of the things that makes us strong are these battles. One of the things that makes us wise are these battles. Now, if it is like that, eh, all the people going to those mountains will have come back with solution. That's not how to practice Christianity. You must grow to know how to hear God on your own. That's how to build trust. Let me share this with you. When we were to give back to our first child, my wife was heavily pregnant, went into the labor room. They've changed it from labor room now to favor room. She started favoring. <laughs> Abby? Not labor. Yeah. She started favoring from the first day. Favor the second day, nothing happened. <laughs> when I went to the bedroom, uh, the toilet of Ibadan Central Hospital to ease myself, I said, Lord, what is going on? He said, Son, she will deliver through CS. I said, Lord, why? He said, You will not understand now. But she will teach and help a lot of women that will need this process. So I came out of the toilet. I went straight to the doctor. Doctor, what is happening? My wife has been favoring for two days. The doctor said, eh, the baby is not coming. We don't know. We've tried everything possible. 
but the baby is not. The pregnancy didn't descend. I said, then what do you think will now happen? He said, is it that we lose either your wife or the baby? Ah! I said, then what do we do? He said, that you are a pastor now. I don't know whether you like what we should do. I said, what do you say? What, what is that? He said, sir, the only option now is for her to be operated, operated upon. You know, me, I've just had God said to me, where? In the toilet. That's the process she will go through. I said, doctor, then what are we waiting for? He said, pastor, are you sure? I said, yes, now. She brought out the papers. I signed. He said, how much? I said, how much? He said, 60,000. And I remember that I was doing one contribution. You know, that's why today I see people that your wife is pregnant, you are begging at delivery, uh, help me, and my wife wants to deliver. He says, he says, it's a guest that told you the date is coming. It should not meet you by, by surprise. That day, I instantly I said, okay, I have, okay, don't worry, doctor, I'm coming. Are we going to do it? He said, yes. I called the people I was doing contribution with. They said, ah, 60,000 on. They brought it to me at the hospital. I now, to now convince my wife was the next thing. So I went to meet her, where she was busy favoring. They said, you will be operated upon. She burst into tears. I said, calm down. I now told her what God told me. I said, God told me. I said, yes. I said, so you know what? As you'll be going to this theater now, I want you to begin to dream of how you will be lecturing women in the future from your experience. You know what she said? He said, since you said God told you, I will go. So I followed her to the theater. They prepared her. As it was time for them to start, they said, Doctor, uh, Pastor, you can please excuse us. Now, can you imagine what gave me that confidence? The voice of God that I had. If you can't hear God, you can't trust him. <coughs> I come again. If you can't hear God, you can't trust him. We've had, our marriage is going to be 21 years. There is no marriage that doesn't have little, little challenge. We've had challenges that could tear us apart. But we never, we never agreed to tear apart. Do you know why? We know what the word of God says. And every single time we have misunderstanding, eh, 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 I don't like it, I don't like it, I don't like it. At our various corners, we don't conclude that we are going to part ways because we are both children of God. Here. Are you going to build your trust in God now? That's why I see. When you see a person that understands how to trust God in the presence of challenge, you'll see that he will be calm. Do you know why? He has heard a voice. Here. But Ah, is this not brother body online? He said, yes, Papa. I'm with you. You're supposed to be here. So trust God. That's why I say, in your various challenges, go and hear God. One of our women, she was telling me, I'm packing out of my husband's house today. I asked her. I'm not saying you should not pack. I tried to talk to her. She said she's packing. I said, I'm not saying you should not pack. But is this the will of God? For you now. Is this what God said you should do? She didn't answer me. She cut off the phone. Yes, she left. She packed her things and left. But today she's in terrible trouble. Terrible trouble. That as at now she's hiding. She can't come to the public because people are looking for her to arrest her. She may be listening to me now. But I remember that day I asked her, are you sure this is the will of God for your life? That's why I say, no matter the situation, I always tell my children and my wife, we sit down. When they tell me what to do, I say, let's just calm down. What is God saying? If it's the will of God, just calm down. Let's continue to go. Let's continue to move. That's how to build faith. Confidence in God. Now, let's now go to the question. 
itself. What are the strategies of the devil to kill your trust in God? What are the strategies of the devil to kill your trust in God? What are the strategies of the devil to kill your trust in God? What are the strategies of the devil to kill your trust in God? I'll only tell you three things and we close. Number one, he will amplify the voices of doubters as they spread their negative report. He will amplify the voices of doubters as they spread their negative report. You know, okay, let me allow you to write before I begin to explain. He will amplify the voices of doubters as they spread their negative report. Second Kings chapter 7 verse 1. Now look up. Do you know that faith, look up, hmm, and natural realities are enemies? Now, natural realities are the things that do has to do with what? Natural thing. One plus one is equal to one. But when we talk about faith, you don't have anything natural. You say one plus one is equal to 11. <coughs> How come? Now look at this. <coughs> Praise the Lord. Then Elisha said, Hear ye the voice of the Lord. Toss ye the Lord. Look at this. Tomorrow, about this time, shall a mayor of fine flour be sold for a shekel, and two mayors of barley for a shekel in the gate of Samaria. Then a lord on whom's hand the king leaned answered the man of God, the man of God and said, Behold, if the Lord will make windows in heaven, might this thing be? Uh -huh. Sir, you don't know the level of scarcity we have in this country? It's just like God is saying to you now, uh, you see, by this time tomorrow, a liter of fuel in Nigeria is going to be 60 naira. Can you say that you to say, ah? Because go jokoli ribe lai lai. At least the one I bought yesterday, we bought for 290. Okay, you own 300. 60 naira by tomorrow. That was what the, you know, it's good when you read the Bible, bring it to the natural, to your present. That's why the man said, ah ah, but long about here, she window. Long, even both us are going to turn 16 naira, sir. My this be, and he said, Behold, thou shalt see it with thy eyes, but thou shalt not eat thereof. Now, wait, I'm, I don't need this man's story now. But what I'm showing you is there are people like this man around your lives. When the devil wants to kill your trust, you know what the devil will do? He will amplify their voices. Are you still trusting God that this is your age? You are saying, I will marry, I will marry, I will marry. Where? Where? This is 2023. Who will marry you with your stature and your age? Are you getting what I'm saying? And you are still saying, it will be well with you. You are there. Say it will be well. It will be well. It, ah. But these people are, they are so possessed with doubting spirits that they doubt everything. I don't say, natural realities always look and sound as real when it is put beside divine reality. You know, natural reality is the physical. When they put it beside divine reality, you doubt it. No, no, no. This one cannot happen. It cannot happen. So the devil now amplify their voice. You know what the devil wants to do? He wants to kill your trust. To make you begin to doubt. Are you sure what God said he would do in my life can never happen? Are you sure? And like I told you, I've told you here before, anytime you doubt God, you fall from the process of the miracles he has made for you. Every single time you doubt God, you fall from the process of miracles. Every single time you doubt God, you fall. That's why you see that Peter was walking upon the sea when Jesus said, come and walk on the sea. But the moment he saw the storm, began to doubt, he started to sink. 
So every time there are doubting Thomases around you, please be careful. The devil wants to kill your trust. I wrote here, in fact, it is comparing what you can see with what you can't see. That's how hard it is. It's like comparing what you can see with what you can't see. God said that we have a child. Three years after my marriage, I'm yet to have it. People are laughing at me. They want to kill my trust. But thank God today we are blessed with the three children that I received their names before the Lord. That's why. Close your ears to doubters. Anyone that speak against what God has told you, you don't need them around your life. Anyone speaking against what God has told you, don't keep them around your life. They are, it's, it's dangerous to keep them around your life. See here. Let's take number two. I'll stop at number three. To kill your trust, number two, he will show you people who were believed to be trusting God, who died without having God show up for them. Please write this down. This one is very important. He will show you people who were believed to be trusting God, who died without having God show up for them. Let me say it again. He will show you people who were believed to be trusting God who died without having God show up for them. You know, when the devil wants to kill your trust, you say, ah, Chetty Bagbini, Bishop so so and so, Tony Otao Lemo, Chetty Bagbini Bukwana Mubeo Leo. Church Bagbini, Church Kony Sokoto, and one more long, no one bet on Johnson. When there's okay, ah, Kosini Abo, Abo Long, Dajuluriwa, one Jubom, Bubu, one Fonkasibe. Even in the church. Now, you know what God told me yesterday when I was studying? I wrote it down this way. I want to read it out to you to hear. Please, you must learn never to judge God negatively. By what you see happen in people's lives. The reason is because you don't know the secret life of some people. Some people you think are born again physically. They are not. Uh, you don't know their secret life. So if you are looking at them, ah, ah, a whole reverence, so, so and so. He may be a reverend in your sight. Eh? Maybe an unbeliever before God. Because you don't know his secret life. So if you now, because of the negative thing that happened to him, begin to condemn God, you'll be, you'll be making wrong choice, making wrong decision, because you don't know their what? Their secret life. Can you imagine? God spoke to Abraham in chapter 15. I will give you a son through your wife, Sarah. In chapter 16, Abraham impregnated a guy. Now, in between chapter 15 and chapter 16, there was a delay of the coming of Isaac for now 25 years. What caused that delay? Because Abraham fell in the next chapter. So somebody will say, why did God promise take so long to come to Abraham? Every single time you backslide, every single time you doubt, you stop the process of God's miracles from reaching you. See I here. That's why I don't judge God wrongly. Say, ah, look at look at her, look at her, and she's part of the sanctuary clean uh, uh, department, so always cleaning the church. Why should that kind of a thing happen to him? Do you know their secret life? Don't you know at times a person may be cleaning and be grumbling? You Papa Papa that's why the Bible said the heart of man is desperately wicked. Who can know it? If God opened our hearts, you'll be shocked.
I've told you here before now. We finished one service and two, two of our sisters was, were fighting. And I called them, why are you fighting? This one said when she, she, when she was leading praise and worship, she was abusing me. Uh -uh. I said, how will she abuse you? The sister that was leading powerful praise and we all are dancing. I asked her, is it true that you were abusing her when you were leading praise? And he said, when she too was winking her eyes on me, me too, I abused her. And I now ask, her, how did you abuse her? He said, when I was singing, all I have is given to me by my God. All I have is given to me. Ah! I said, we were dancing, thinking that you are glorifying God. All we are. He said, no, I was abusing her. Great praise worship. This praise worship that I'm leading is given to me by God. He didn't choose you. Now, imagine if God struck her on the altar. What would people say? Uden praise. Can you imagine? Allah ma buru i kamalo lono. In your den lead praise and worship. Allah under pass on the altar. Abe shude pass. Allah will lead double boni. Abala roko only the praise. Ashambura one. That's why don't judge God by the negative experiences in people's life. When I see terrible things happen to good people, me, I don't judge God. Though. I don't abuse God. Though. I say, God, only you understand. You are the only one that sees what we don't see. I was listening to Reverend Billy, uh, 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 Pastor Billy Akoni. <coughs> and he said, there's this man of God, very anointed man of God, very anointed. Everybody knew him as their father in the law. He died. They were doing his burial. It was during the burial service that a woman walked in with two children. He said, and the woman lifted her hands, that please, can you allow my children to do their last respect for their father? Everybody asked, who is their father? It was the reverend that died. Reverend Billy, uh, uh, he doesn't have beer brain. Pastor Billy Akoni said, those two children were like the man vomited them from his mouth. Bubuasi Monsi Reverend. Ashoni ya wasi koro kwe lomo meji. Don't judge God by the negative things happening in people's life. You don't know their secret life. Say here. Let's take one more and close. Have you learned something today? What's the question we are answering? What are the devil's strategy to kill your trust in God? Number three, when it looks as if things are slow or people are overtaking you, the devil will whisper to your heart, the message of mockery. When it looks as if things are slow or people are overtaking you, the devil will whisper to your heart the message of mockery. You know why? He wants to make you drop your trust. You know, there are times in life it looks as if our journey is slow. There are times like that. I want you to understand. Every child of God understand. No matter how born again you are, hear me. The same Jesus that was in the camp and bread multiply was in the boat when the storm was storming against it. There are different faces in life. He was in the camp, bread multiply. He was in the boat, there was storm. The same Jesus. Which means that Jesus can be in your boat and there will be storm. There are times like that. Don't let anybody deceive you. That, ah, because God is in your life, everything will be smooth and a lie. So, when you notice that it's like, it's like things are slow, it does not mean God is not working. It may be one face of life. Look at this. Psalm 23. Let's read it. Put it on screen. The Lord is my shepherd. Me, I know good luck. He leads me beside still waters. Abi, he restores my soul. I want us to see it. 
Psalm 23 from verse 1. I want to show you how life is. Those of you there, don't you have Psalm 23? Psalm 23 from verse 1. Thank you. Let's go together. The Lord is my shepherd. What does that mean? God is the one leading me. What will now happen? I will not want, which means I will not lack. I will have abundance. People like it. Verse 2. He maketh me to lie down in green pasture. Oh, cool place. People like it. He leadeth me beside still waters, a place where I won't struggle with anybody because God is leading. He restores my soul. Everything that I've gone I've lost, I get it back. He leadeth me in the path of righteousness. He teaches me how to, to walk well for his name's sake. Because God is my shepherd. But verse 4, uncle. Has God turned back from shepherding you? Because he's still the shepherd. Read it now. Let's read it again. One, two, three, let's go. Yay! Though I walk through the valley of the shadow of death, I will fear no evil. For what? For that. Wait. Why will God be with you and you are still walking in the valley of the shadow of death? You know why they had to put this one? Eh? Because you are with me. Eh? Some people say you backslided in verse 3. That's why you went into the valley of the shadow of death. So, you know God is a, is a wise God. He had to put this one here. So that you know that you didn't backslide. Even if you are going through the valley, I deal with you. So it means that it cannot always be rosy. Are you getting what I'm saying? There are times it could be slow. You put anointing oil. You put mantle. You put everything. Market, no go. It does not mean God is not there. But at such times, the devil will come with the voice of mockery to make you doubt. Where is your God? Are you sure God is with you? Are you sure he answers prayers? Look at that allergy. He has bought a new car. You are still struggling with this, your jalopy. There are times the journey may be slow. And sincerely speaking, God teaches us with all kinds of seasons. There are many things I've learned in this life. I learned in tough time and I learned in abundance. But God teaches us with seasons. So at such times, when the devil is whispering to you, please don't drop your trust. Don't drop your trust. The target of the devil is to kill your trust. Listen, I wrote here, you must understand that life is a school <coughs> of continuous learning. At times, there is, over, there, are over, there is overflow. At times, you face challenges. All these come to help us pick lessons and for us to prove our trust in God. No matter the situation that, that comes your way, don't compromise your trust. All these things will come in order to prove that you prove your level of trust. See, me, Pastor Prince Will, Afolabi, I have decided it's God I will serve with my life. Have you decided? Don't let anything kill your trust in him. That's why if, I'm, if we are, uh, the people abroad don't understand what we call Gary, if we are drinking, uh, uh, what is the poorest food you eat in your country abroad? Uh, I don't know the poorest food in our country here, but Gary is no even longer the poorest food again now. No matter how tough the situation is. No matter what the devil is whispering. Pastor Pius, you're also welcome online. God bless you. No matter how tough or whatever the devil is whispering, please maintain your trust. You know what? It is your trust in God that makes you calm. You know why you won't have high blood prayer? Because you trust God. You know why the devil will know that you'll not be confused? Because you trust. You be, the reason why you will not be confused, no matter the situation, is because of your trust. It is trust in God that makes us calm. No matter the situation. Will you trust God? I've taught you how. I've taught you what it means to trust God. I've taught you how to trust God. And we are summarizing 
I've summarized by teaching you what the devil tried to do to make to kill your trust. Don't let him kill it anymore. If you have succeeded in the past, don't let him kill your trust again. Again. All those things that I didn't have those days, by the grace of God, I have them now. I have them now. When I undertook a new assignment, at first, when I started that assignment, it like it didn't drop. But I kept trusting. Today, now I'm looking for space for that assignment. I'm looking for space. We don't have space anymore. I'm looking for space. Because I'm trusting. Trust God. Hold on to your faith. Hold on to the Lord. When situation is turning against you, hold on to the Lord. I say hold on to the Lord. Hold on to the Lord. When the devil is fighting against you, hold on to the Lord. Rise up on your feet. Hold on to the Lord. Let me hear you now. Hold on to the Lord. When the devil is fighting against you, hold on to the Lord. Hold on. I want to hear your voice. I can't hear you. I say hold on to the Lord hold on to the Lord when situation is turning against you hold on to the Lord let me hear your voice hold on say yeah Tell your neighbor, hold on to your faith. Hold on to your faith. When the devil is fighting against you, just hold on to your faith. Hold it now. Yeah. I say, hold on to the love. Hold on to the Lord When the devil is fighting against you Hold on to the Lord Let me hear you Hold on to We just have to close this particular service Now do you now know that you should not allow your, your trust in God to die before I pray for you, how many of you are coming for the first time? Let's recognize you. Yes, sir.